Welcome back to B&B Motorsports. I'm really, really excited for this episode. I'm going to be doing a brief tour, drive, and final review. And with me, I have the 2002 Pontiac Firehawk, which is my birth year. So I'm really excited for this episode. And right here, I have the own birth certificate of this car. Shout out to Quigley. The Firehawk is a special edition Trans Am. There were very few Firehawks made in comparison to Trans Ams and Firebirds. An easy way to discern a Trans Am from a Firehawk is that unique hood. different about this latch is you must pull it instead of push up. The motor is an LS1 making about 430 horsepower at the tire. Stock, the Firehawk made approximately 345 horsepower at the flywheel. The cam is a Magic Stick 4 cam along with all assorted drivetrain enhancements. There's also a stage three twin disc monster clutch and the transmission is a T56. The owner also added some high performance suspension enhancements, parts from Bilstein, Eibach, and UMI. Plus, check out these sweet rims. Good choice, Quigley. There's a 342 rear end, full length headers, three inch exhaust. It was tuned by Just Tune and QTP cutouts. Let's talk pros. If you recall from my first video, I dissed the tri-colored taillights of my 1997 Camaro. I think Pontiac got it right with the honeycomb. I'm really fond of this hood, as the Firehawk took the functionality of a Ram Air hood, but made it one step cooler. I found one con. All of these suspension enhancements lower the body to the ground, which makes driving in and out of inclined driveways a little bit of a challenge. After checking out the door panel, you can see the stock dark gray leather seats that are quite comfortable. There's also the back seats that are comfortable, yet a bit crowded. There's the gauges, the steering wheel controls, and the radio. Okay, let's talk pros. As you saw from the walkthrough, this interior is almost pristine for its 19 year old age. These steering wheel controls are also a very nice upgraded bonus. A con I have found is the smaller back seat, which a 5'7 person like myself has very little leg room. So I hope you're not six foot. The short throw shifter sure is fun, but for a new driver, they may find it notchy. So I wouldn't recommend this car for someone who is not comfortable with a manual. Let's look at the key. On the fob, you've got the lock and unlock, the alarm, and the trunk release. You also have this really cool Firehawk badge right here. The actual key to unlock the car and the ignition key.
time for my final review. Performance, 8.7 out of 10. The car is definitely set up to perform. It's not really set up to daily drive, which I will get into here shortly. Aesthetics, 9 out of 10 that has the best butt in the business. It's one of the sharpest looking cars of its time. Comfort, 6.5 out of 10. The car does ride stiff and they're very hard to get in and out of. And this Firehawk is loud with or without the cutouts. So people in the back seat will really hear that drone. Fun factor, nine out of 10. I mean, who doesn't love shifting gears and turning heads? Practicality, 5 out of 10. It does get pretty bad gas mileage, especially if you're up there in the RPMs. And there is a very small back seat, as I showed earlier. The clutch is fairly firm, so I wouldn't recommend this for new drivers who are just getting comfortable with a manual. It would take a more experienced adult, typically. And then, all in all, overall experience, a very, very solid 8 out of 10. This is a super fun weekend drive. I wouldn't personally take it to work every day. I don't want to get in trouble, but for those of you that can control yourself, this might be perfect for you. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the next Motorsports Monday. I have some really exciting stuff planned for you guys. Thank you so much to everyone that has offered their vehicles for me. I'm really, really looking forward to getting more in touch with you guys. Make sure you check out my video from last week where I review a BMW 2020 M340i xDrive. And make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you all next Monday.